Here are the dimensions we're using to make our brick. I've compared these to my own caliper measurements and they're right on. You can also find the PDF or CAD file at this website. I'll be referring to these off screen as we go along. First things first, Houdini by default works in meters. So to make things simple, I set Max's units to also be meters. So if we go to customize unit setup, my system units are meters and my display unit scale is also meters. This will work fine because in the end, if we take a model built in meters and take it into something like 3D Builder or a 3D printing program and tell that program it's millimeters, it'll just automatically work. Okay, I'm just gonna build a box over here. I'm gonna make it a cube and have it snap to the center of the world. And we want this thing to be 31.8 long and 15.8 wide and 9.6 tall. Where do I get these numbers? Again, 31.8 long, 15.8 wide, and 9.6 tall, plus our little studs at the top. Okay, let's zoom in, and let's just build our other box over here. We'll hold down Control and Houdini and hit box, and we've got a box. Let's make it the same size. You probably already know that when you create an object in Houdini, you're actually getting a container for that object, which is kind of like a group in Max. And you have to jump into that container. I just hit I to get into it to access the true object inside. So in this case, we want our object to be 31.8 long by 9.6 tall, because X, Y, Z, and Houdini Y is up, compared to Z up and max, and 15.8 long. We'll do spacebar G to center our object, and now we've got amazingly the same thing. But the first difference we notice is that in Max, the object is built on the grid. In Houdini, I'll hit spacebar 3, zoom out, and we see that our object is built in the center across the middle of the grid. I'll do spacebar 1, get back over here. A trick you see in Houdini all the time is to, to build upwards in the Z off the grid. We copy the parameter from the Y and paste it to the center Y, paste relative reference, and divide that by two. So our object is on the grid. And if we make our object bigger or smaller, it's always gonna be on the grid. Now we're really looking at the same thing. Let's make our little studs. We'll start over here in max. I'm snapping to the middle again. We don't need any height segments. We need a height of our stud of 1.8 and a radius of 2.4. All right, so we've got a stud on the ground. And before we worry about putting the stud on top of the box, let's think about distributing the studs the way they're supposed to look, which is two across and four down. Now you're not here to learn 3ds Max from me, but I'll just show you the way I like to do this. Let's create a box or a cube right in the middle of our world again, and we'll make it 24 long and eight wide and three segments. So we have, we'll have two studs across and four down. I'm just gonna snap this sphere here, hold shift, snap here and make three copy instances. Select these guys, change the selection center to pivot point center, hold down shift copy, one copy, instance, and we are ready to go. Of course, that's not exactly what we're looking for. Let's get rid of that box, take our little studs, and we're going to move them down until they intersect an edge. There we go. And we have our little studs on the surface of our Lego. Now we practically have a whole Lego. Well, let's jump over to Houdini and see how we would do the same thing. So we ask ourselves, okay, I've got a box. Now I want to make a tube or a, a cylinder in here. Well, I see tube up in the menu. I'm going to click it. Okay, I'm going to click anywhere. And what I expected to happen did not happen. If I look over here in the network editor, I've jumped up to the scene view, and now I've got my box object, and then next to it a tube object. That's not what I want. Let's delete that. Let's jump back inside. I want to hit tab, hit tube, or T-U-B-E, hit enter. And now 
I've got a tube in my scene where I want it to be. And we remember our radius needs to be 2.4 and the height 1.8. Okay, now we have a similar problem we had before, which is we have a tube on the ground and not where it's supposed to be. Now before we worry about putting it on top of the box, let's distribute it 2 by 4. So I'll hit spacebar 3, no, spacebar 2. We'll do it much the same way we did in Max, but even more automated. We're going to make a grid, put it down, and this grid needs to be in the Y size, it needs to be 24, and in the X size, 8, and the rows, there we go. 4 by 3 gives us the same thing we saw over here in max when we made that grid, except in this case, it's not a box, it's actually a flat plane. Now, we, of course, we're not seeing everything at the same time, because that's how Houdini operates, but we can put on template if we want of that tube, and we can see the grid, spacebar H, homed, homed us in on here. Now, what we're going to do is snap copies of this tube. Let's do it the other way around. We're going to snap copies of this tube to the points on this grid. Pretty easy. Tab, copy, copy to points. The geometry to copy is comes into this guy. And where we're copying it goes here. We see the results. We uncheck transform using target point orientations. And we've got too many things. Now, what did we do wrong here? One, two, three, four. We have too many columns. There we go. Now we've got our little studs where they're supposed to be, at least distributed, right? And we want to put tops on these, don't we? So we go back to tube and hit end caps. That's all we got to do for that. And we will use polygons. And if we are going to 3D print this, we're going to need a lot of columns for this to print smoothly. So I'm going to put it up to 40 for now. You might even go to 60 or more, just so it's very smooth when you print it. Now to move these to the top of our box, we've got things going multiple directions. Let's just look at our grid. I'm going to hit W for wireframe. And let's just change the orientation of our grid. Let's make it 24 by 8. And what does that do to our copies? Messes them up two by four. Got our copies, everything's oriented, but we need to move our copies up. First thing we'll do is let's just make a merge. Put this here, put this there, so we can see both. I feel like the thing that people get caught up on in Houdini is worrying about everything being procedural and being some kind of automated process. It doesn't always have to be the case, and you can go kind of crazy trying to work like that. All we're going to do is work the same way we did Max. We're going to use snaps to just snap these guys up here. So here's our tubes. We're going to add a transform. We'll plug it in here. So if we turn on point snap, and we're currently selecting the transform of our, of our tubes, of our studs, move up in Y, so it'll be confined to Y. And if we move our cursor over here, it finds the point of the box and snaps it into place. So we're snapped into place, but since our tube was created in the middle of the grid, we can do that same trick we did before. We can go back to our original tube and say its center is half its height. So we say height, copy parameter, center, paste relative reference, divided by two, puts it on the grid, and when we look at our transform, or our merge, we see that our studs are exactly where we want them to be. I'm going to hit space bar one to see the whole thing, W to get out a wireframe, and you should be learning these key commands, but alt, middle mouse button, alt left, mouse click. And we've got a basic starter Lego. We don't have the bottom yet. But we got the basic top shape. If we printed this right now, Legos would fit on top of this Lego. 
This video is getting kind of long, so I think in part two, we will build the inside of the Lego, which has a few parts to it.